Hey folks, it's Ridgar here, how you doing? Welcome back to Farming Simulator 19 here in Boulder Canyon. We are continuing on with our work in the field here today. Going round and round the outside just to start with, with the AI vehicle extension. Cultivating up this little bit of grass. Once he's done all of the cultivating of the grass, then we will start planting. And we're going to be planting some grain in here. Now, we've got some money. We don't have all the money that we need just yet. And unfortunately, we can't sell our wool just yet either because the price is way too low. So even though we've got four pallets waiting to be sold, we can't actually do anything with them. What we do have over at the shop is a few machines that are waiting to be sold. And I'm hoping that that is going to be enough so that we can then buy our brand new combine. It's going to be that one, the Bison Super Z056. And we're going to be getting the header to go with it, which is that one. Now that was $27,000 and the combine itself is 84, which means we need 111. So we need another $10,000. So... We may, we may not be able to do it. We've got to be able to have both of them together because we can't shift them without the combine. Um, if we don't... Oh, I see. It's cutting right in across, but it's still actually going on there. Ah. Right. Well, at least it's still cultivating. This is a good thing. Sort of straightening up a little bit on there as well. Then coming on round. So, yeah, we're, we're slowly getting there with the cultivating on here. It's happening. It's taking its time in places, but it's still happening. And you're going to go there and then turn and straighten up. But, um, yeah, so we need $111,000 in total. I'm hoping that machinery we've got over there ready to sell will be enough just to take it up over that total. If it is, that is going to be absolutely fantastic because it means we're not going to need to wait. We can get that combine and we can get it back here. Right, so that one is fine. We're going to leave that one there, leave that one to carry on. And what I'm going to do is go over to the a dealership tractor. I'm going to use this one to shunt the machinery over onto the sell point and we're going to sell all of it now to get us the little bit of money that we want for this so we've got that one there bring that one over and sell it and we've also got the water bowser so we'll lower that one down there and just have it so that it gets checked over by the dealer because if you go into here not into here if you go into here and garage like this we've got the water bowser here is five nine two five that one's saying three thousand now that was saying only like one thousand and something um because oh wait no we don't do that we want to do that so there three thousand six hundred and twenty and if i go via here is that saying the same price three thousand no it's not three thousand so we should, in theory, we should have enough money to be able to sell all of it. Let's go to you and sell that one for 3620 There we go. That's 104000 I'll get the water tanker over here and sell that one as well. There's nothing else at the moment that we own that we want to sell. We've got a plow and stuff back at the yard. that We're not going to want to sell those. We've got hay turning equipment. We're not going to want to sell that. Um, this one here, we no longer want to keep this one. We don't have a use for it. So there is nothing else that we're going to want. There's nothing else that we want to sell. But we've also got no use for that one either. Let's go over to you. And that one right there, 7,109. Sell that one as well. Yes, okay. That has taken us to just over the 111,000 that we need for our new combine. So I can go and get that. The money's ticking away right now. 84,000 on there. Global positioning system adds 15 grand. We won't have the GPS system on this one. I don't think we need the GPS on the combine anyway. So I'm going to buy that one there for 84,000. Okay. And then we're going to go into here. Go to headers. And we want that one right there. Buy for 27,000. Yes. And there we go. So that leaves us with 890,000 left over. 
It's going to move this tractor and put it back in its parking spot. Then we're going to get that combine loaded up onto the truck and... Oops. Get that combine loaded up onto the truck and we get that back down to the farm. I'm also just going to, after I park this one up, we will just go and check on our hired help and see how they're getting on um, going around and around the field. So we'll stop you right there. Oh, he's down over to this corner now. I'd say we've reached the point where we don't actually need the hired help working here anymore. I mean, it's, it's getting some of these corners. It's, it's messing them up a little bit. It, it does start to do some strange things, but you don't want it going round and round the whole time anyway. So I'll bring it out to about there, like that. Move it on up a little bit, and then let it just carry on itself. So I sort of straightened out the corner a little bit. And then I'll put... I'm just going to use standard hired help to do the rest of the field. Once I've done this one last pass along here. Because I want to see the AI vehicle extension do it. I mean, on this bit here, it's doing great. It's got a nice wide cut on it. It's done really well. Up at the end here, not quite so good. Because it doesn't, t it doesn't seem to turn the corner quite as you would like. Although... No, there is, it seems... There, right there, look. See, it's... No, it's doing all right with that one. It has occasionally not quite done the corner properly, which can cause a few problems, but that seems to be okay there. And this corner up here, this is the bit that it seems to struggle with, is, is getting this bit right here. Definitely seems to struggle with getting this bit here, because look, look at that angle that it's going in. It's now, well, though, it did straighten out on the angle there. It's going to go straight forward. So it's doing all right there on that bit. But how is it going to do with the rest of the field? Because it did struggle the last time it came round here. It definitely struggled with staying into the field and doing it. It cut right across quite a few bits of this. There's no cutting there. There's no cutting in there. That's, that's actually done it really well. Okay. Okay, ideal. I can I can cope with that. It's not going to do any more there. It's going to stop. But I'm just going to cancel that now. I'm going to let it go. And I think we'll go down over to that far corner down over there. And we'll start down there. And we'll work our way up across the fields. That's what we're going to do with this one. All the way down here. Ooh. I'm just wondering if I can go... No, I won't I won't do anything going around that rock at the moment. We'll do that at the very end. That'll be the last bit we do. We'll do a tidy up job on the stone over there. For now, we're not going to worry about it. So I need to bring you around here. Then I need to go control H like that and turn that one onto normal like that. And I bring you along here. And you can see the pattern in the soil. So all i got to do is line that up like that and press H onto there. It will lower down... And that's in the straight line that we're going to want. That's where it's going to work to. So all i got to do now is just leave it go. Just leave it working. I don't have to worry about any of the rest of it. Let's just make sure he does come over and just, just do this little bit. I don't want to have any major headaches or anything. No, it, it doesn't look like we're going to have any major headaches. It's just going to cultivate that. We will be getting a bigger cultivator, but we don't want a bigger one just yet. It's going to take too long to go dealing with bigger cultivators just yet. What I will do, if I load that front part of the trailer there, get that one sort of set up, back up a bit, like that, get that one on, like that, and then I'll move this one over here out of the way, like that. And then I got a bit more room for manoeuvring this combine round. So we need to get that one. There is our brand new combine waiting for delivery. So all we got to do is get it back to the yard. And yes, there are a few other things that we're going to want to get as well. But right now we don't need them. We are now fully equipped to be able to do some arable crops. It would be really good if we could... I'm looking at the wheels to steer them, and I'm, that's why I was turning them the wrong way. Because I was busy looking at them, and I shouldn't have been. Um, that's pretty much as much as it will do. It will 
slide in and out like that. Well, that's in and then back like that. That's fully folded. Um, yeah, the... Um, what was I going to say? The, the other bits that we want, we will be able to get them without too much trouble. It's, it's not going to take too long to be able to actually go and get them and, and make sure that we've got them back at the farm. But it's not a major problem. It's, it's not a serious issue. We, we don't have to worry about it too much. Because the, the spray... Well, the spray... Sometimes the spray doesn't even matter particularly, but then other times it can affect it. Um, the biggest one, I'd say, is going to be the uh, the lime. If we could get the lime back, what have we got in the way of lime spreaders at the moment? We've got that one. Now, base game, you got that one there, and then you got this one, which will take lime as 40 grand. And you got that one, which will take lime, which is 67 grand. That's the base costs of them. And that's it. Oh. I do have access to some other mods that are smaller ones that we could put lime on. So we could do it like that. And we could trade up and spend about 20,000 and get a lime spreader. I think that would be our best option. Because the big trailed ones, I don't think those are particularly suitable for our farm at the moment. They don't seem to be sort of the, the right thing to be getting. Um, one thing that I will possibly do is the first lime that we do, I will put that as... Um, there we go. There is our new delivery on its way to the farm right there. I like this. I'm going to bring that round sharp like that. There. There he is. There is the new delivery on its way to the farm. Looking fan schmastic. Absolutely awesome. Um, yeah, the uh, lime, if I was to deliver some pallets to the farm for our first coating of lime, that I think would probably be sufficient. I don't think we need to worry about having anything more than that. Now, last time we turned left here, it ended in a complete disaster. We got stuck on the bridge. So I'm not going to do that again. I'm going to go this way. And we will take our combine up this way and go up the steeper hill. And then down the steeper hill on the other side. I'd rather not do the up and down the steeper hill, but this is what we've got to do. And... It does indeed look like it locks to the trailer properly. I mean, it, it sort of feels like it locks to the trailer. It locks the machinery to the trailer, which is why uh, when we had the plow, when it fell off the trailer and we didn't take it off the trailer properly, it sort of, it did that really weird glitchy thing before I reloaded the game. Um, and I think that was because it locked to the trailer. And if you look here, we've now got a grain capacity on our trailer. And that's because the combine is locked to the trailer, so it's now classing it as one machine. So I, that is really good that it will lock to the trailer. I mean, it's a bit unfortunate that when it happened previously, it ended up glitching out when we went over the bridge and knocked the thing off. Don't quite know why it would have done that, but it did. And at least we know that was sort of the, the cause of the problem that we had. And... I can we put... We can, I know that we can put cotton harvesters on this one. Cotton harvesters will go on here. But what about bigger combines? Can we put bigger combines on this track uh, on this trailer? And um, drag them along? You didn't used to be able to. They, the thing wasn't wide enough. The combine wheels would sit either side of the trailer. Just straddle it. And you weren't able to move it down the road. But I think this model has been made ever so slightly wider. So you are actually able to sit on it with... The bigger combines, the small combines you could easily fit. But I think now you can actually do the big combines as well, which is a huge step forward. It's got to be said, that is a, a massive amount of progress that has been made with the game. Let's bring this one down around here. This is where we got to be careful. The last thing we want is to have something go horribly wrong and end up in the drink with our combine. The, the truck itself doesn't matter. The truck's not ours and it's not us driving it. This is the shop delivering the item to us. But if I, well, I, I suppose then technically if the combine, like, as it's the shop delivering the item to us, technically if it all goes wrong on the delivery journey, 
that would be the fault of the shop. So they're the ones that would have to pay for it, not us. So we wouldn't end up losing any money on it. I don't know what people would feel about that, though. I don't know if you'd feel that that was a little bit cheaty, really, um, doing it like that. And I personally, I would sort of feel like that was a little bit cheaty, to be honest. Um, I don't know. Maybe, maybe we could just sort of say that it was some sort of major disaster or something, and then the shop is not able to get our combine back. Um, and we'd have to either wait for a set number of in-game days or something like that. I don't know. Let's, let's just let's try not to cross that bridge and not drive into the drink with the, the vehicle and the delivery that we're making. That's, that's what I would say. Is it probably in our best interest not to drive the thing into the river in the first place? And then we're not going to have to worry about this. This is questions that will not need to be answered. I think this is good. This, this is what we want. We want questions that don't need to be answered. Occasionally, it's okay not to find out what's going to happen. Occasionally, it's okay not to push the great big red button. Although, this is me we're talking about. And if there's a great big red button that needs to be pushed, you just know I'm the one to push it for you. That's, that's what I do. That's my specialty. If there's a big red button that is going to be pushed, I'm going to push it for you. I'm going to find out what happens on the other end of that great big red button. And then you won't have any issues whatsoever. Now, let's just back you up this way a little bit. Like that. And we go to there. And then I need to unhitch that bit. And damage the back of the combine because it's drifted a little bit. Yeah, I want to stop there. And then I want to get onto my new combine. Ha <laughs> ha Yes! We have a new combine, ladies and gentlemen. It is here at the farm. There it is in all its sleek and beautiful glory. We're going to go and put this one over here for now. Because we're not actually using the grain silo. So we may as well park the combine next to the grain silo. Let's bring you around here. I love the way that this, this one's got a beautiful sharp turn on it. Wonderful sharp turn on this one. It's absolutely fantastic. Straighten you up a little bit. There. Right. We're going to put that one right there. That's where we're going to leave this one. Lower that down. And done. There is the very first combine on our farm. Isn't that amazing? Now, that truck is going to head back to the shop. So the driver is going to go and whiz off with that one. Where is it? There. Uh, so he's there. And... There. And there. Right, so he's driven back to the shop. He's gone and done that. We've got less than $500 left. We've got that tractor working away in the field. It's doing a great job and everything, but it's going to take him a while to get that job done. Now, I would also like to have some spare money so that we can start doing some planting. But we can't do the planting until we've got the money because we're going to need to buy some seed. So in order to get some money, it would be prudent, methinks, to head off up here and cut down some more trees. If we cut down another load of trees, um, even if it's just like one load, that's 50 grand. We can't sell the wool yet. The wool's got to wait. What's the price doing at the moment? Yeah, see, wool is still down. It's not. It's, it's probably not going to be up until tomorrow, so we're not going to worry about that. We will cut down a few trees so that we can use these. Now, somebody has said to me, actually more than one person has said to me, that we shouldn't cut down all the trees right along the bank up here. What we should do is we should have a line of trees along the edge of the bank right here. So that we don't have more landslip like that right there. See, there's landslip there and there's more landslip over there. We don't want that. We, so if we plant trees along here, we're not going to contribute to mass erosion. And that's probably a good idea. So it's something that I'm considering is going and planting a few trees along there. But we've got to get a tree planter to be able to do that. So it's not something that I can do immediately. It's on, it's on the to-do list though. Right, let's start that one up a minute. And we'll go in here. So we're going to want to take out roughly a load of timber. Because that's about 50 grand. So if I, can, if I can persuade this thing to cut roughly one load. 
Get 30 grand, cut that off to the mill, and then we've got all the money we need for everything else that we want to do. Which is the planting. Well, not everything else that we want to do. Let's just clarify that. Not everything. We're going to want to be able to do some lime spreading. Now, I'm going to try and get a suitable lime spreader mod so that we've got that one available and i've got an idea of the one that i would like the sprayer itself is another few thousands that we're going to want to get so there's another item that we've got to go and spend a bit of money on doing it from this far and through the haze of the leaves on the trees is really not easy right bring you into there there we go got it and there's another one over there. That next one should be a little bit easier. Take you off of there and off of there. And then we can go into here. I'm just hoping that we're not going to have all of the logs rolling all the way down to the bottom of the hill. Because that's going to be slightly frustrating. And there's another one. Like that. Um, yeah. Tree planter. And pallet of trees, we could just plant a few along the bank up here. And, I mean, we could use that as a bit of a tree farm so that we're also harvesting those trees when they are right. Although, not sure if I want to do that, to be honest. If I go to the trouble of planting the trees along the bank, I'll probably just leave them and won't actually do anything to them at all. Let's just get that bit in a minute. I shouldn't cut while the thing is bouncing in the air because it ends up not actually doing the job properly. Just It sort of levers it up ever so slightly and so it doesn't get you quite a, um, a clean cut on the bottom and that's going to leave a bit more trouble for the, um, what do you call it, the stump grinder when it comes through. Put that down there and... Right, where am I going to go? I'll... There's two trees right here. If I take... Oh, hang on. There's another one right there next to me. This is a problem when you're doing this. It's trying to get the camera angle right so that you can sort of see things. But be able to move around at the same time. And then also see what you're doing with your actual machine. And I'd say probably the single most annoying part about this job is getting the camera right. Uh, the actual moving the thing around, yes, it can be frustrating, but, yeah, seeing what you're doing is probably the hardest part of it. And I've tried going in cab and doing some of the work in cab, and it sort of works, but I don't get on with it all that well, so I don't really want to do too much in cab stuff. That was a remarkable coincidence that came round onto there. That was definitely not planned, but I'm quite happy for it. Drop you off there. And then we've got one here to our left that will take off. And then I'll just sort of work on this clump that's to our right-hand side as we go down the hill. And remove that. And then i got that little bit right there. Which I'm going to jump out and cut right now with a chainsaw. So that I don't have to worry about it. Because it doesn't always... Um, sometimes it loads onto the trailer. And sometimes it doesn't on the logging trailer. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. So I'd rather just get rid of them. It'd be good if you had, like, a delete option. All right, with those little tiny bits like that. It'd be really good if there was, like, a button that you could press that would just delete the top of the branch instead of it being left behind and you having to deal with it like that. It would make life a little bit easier for us. I guess, there's a, I guess that somebody will have invented a mod that will do that. Whether or not it's like a particularly good publicly available one is another matter entirely. But considering some of the mods that I've seen, uh, it wouldn't surprise me if there's someone had added a little bit of a function like that just to get rid of those annoying little tips on the trees. I know that there was a mod that came out with the tree harvesters and stuff in FS17 that allowed you to have all kinds of extra options with the tree harvester, plus an auto length one, and it would automatically select the most appropriate length from within a given range that you had set. So if it decided that the tree that you just cut would be better suited if it was cut into two lengths of 12 meters and one length of 8 meters, that's what it would do. And 
It was a really good mod. It was it was actually really I really liked it. I mean it was Auto Tree Harvester. Unfortunately, Auto Tree Harvester was a little bit of a false adver a, a false advertisement because I thought originally that it meant that it automatically grabbed hold of the trees and cut them down and everything, but no, it didn't do that. It would just automatically select the lengths for the tree. I don't know if it would automatically do the trimming bit, this bit here that we're doing right now, um, but it definitely did automatically select the lengths of the tree that you were cutting down, it, the, the lengths of all of the logs. Definitely did do that bit. So, I mean, for that bit alone, it was actually quite cool. It did mean that you had loads of different lengths on your trees when you were finished cutting them all up, and for some people, that would have been a real nuisance. Although, if you're using auto load, or you were using auto load, uh, the auto load in FS17 didn't come, like, the auto load that we've got now with the logs, it's got these extra options where you've got the multiple stacks and everything. I don't recall seeing that at any point in FS17. I think it was just one trailer with one load into the middle of it, and that was it. So, it didn't really matter if you had a whole load of lengths that were all different lengths. The only problem arose from that when the auto load thought that they were too long, but you, I think you could specify like a maximum length, um, so you didn't have to worry about it when you were doing the auto tree harvesting. And, and then of course you had the people who like to just load manually anyway, so if you're cutting 15 meter logs with manual loading, that's absolutely fine, that, that's not going to affect anything, is it? Let's go and put that one over there. How much have we done now? Not even close to 50, I know that we haven't done anywhere close to 50 grand's worth, but we may have done, like, a few thousands worth, maybe, maybe 10 or 15. And that would be enough to at least do the planting. It won't be enough to do the lime, and I'd kind of like to do lime before, there, see, it went to the ground and then it sort of bounced back up again. I'd kind of like to do lime before I do start doing the planting, and then we'll plant afterwards. That's, that's kind of what I'd like to do. So we might go and have a look at being able to do that. I, I know the mod that I'd like to use is one that I used in the Black Mountain series. That's, it's got quite a few different adjustments on the, um, on, on the, what I call, on, on the fertilizer spinner. It's, it, it had quite a few different options on it. So there's different uh, attachments that you could put on it. You could put an extension on it. Um, I think it even had different spreading widths, although I'm not 100% sure on the whole spreading widths thing. Um, but either way, it was a it was a really good one. I liked it. And the only reason I got rid of it was because I wanted something with larger capacity to continue on with the Boulder Canyon series with all of our new massive great big fields that we've now got in the series. Uh, but the actual thing that we were using to start with, the fertilizer spinner on there, that was perfect for the job. It was absolutely spot on perfect for the job. Now, I get that tree there, and then I'm going to head down the hill a little bit further, because there's another one i got my greedy little eye on. Let's back you up a bit. Bring you onto there, like that. Right, I chop that, and there's that tall one down there to our right. You can see the one that I mean. It's right there in front of us. I want to grab that one. I'm thinking about maybe a couple of others down there as well, which would look pretty good. And... Oh, I've got, I've turned the lights on. I did, I did think that I had lights on there for a minute. I don't actually need those on. I suppose it does help a little bit in, in places, doesn't it? Just, just to make it a little bit easier for people to see. Uh, there, right, there we go. We'll go like that, and put that over there. Right, that's working nicely. Take that one off of there. And then there's a couple here. We've got the old type of tree here. These always seem to have more timber on them than the new type of pine trees. These older types, they always seem to have more wood in them for the height of the tree. Although, well, may maybe, I don't know, maybe they're just taller trees, and I'm, I'm not sort of really noticing that. Wouldn't surprise me. There's a lot of things that I don't particularly notice very well. Over you down there. Take you over. Get a couple more. How much time have we got? Right, we, we are running out of time for today's episode, so I'm going to be... Let's just do a couple more trees here. I think that we will have done all of the actual timber work that we need to do, just for today. Put that on. There we go. 
Put that one on there. And then chop that one down. Like that. There's a couple more right in front of me. I'm going to leave those couple right in front of me. I'll do them another time. Because I think I've got enough timber now. Once I go... I'm going to sort of trot on down the hill a little bit. And there's two trees down there I'm going to get. And I think that's going to be enough just to make the load that I want to make. We come down here. I suppose, actually, no, we, we can do these three. We can do these three plus the two down below me that I want to do as well. So I'll go up there like that. Let's see if we can do it from this angle. That one out like that. Get that first one. No, nope, that's not ready to get yet. There we go, right. Put that one onto there. And slice that one up. And then we get the next one there right beside us. And then we've got two behind us. Once we've got these other two here. And that is all of it. So there's that bit there. Then I can bring you in a little bit. Out a bit. Down a bit. Left a bit. Up a bit. There we go. Like that. Get that one out. And this then should be enough so that we've... Doing the seed should be that should be fine. I don't think we're going to have a problem having enough seed. Although I mean, grass seed lasts a long time in the actual drill, doesn't it? You don't have to go and get very much more. But when we're planting wheat, I sus well barley one or the other. We're, no barley. We'll do barley first. I want to do barley first. When we plant the barley, that's going to take a little bit longer. Um, it it uses the seed up a bit faster doing the barley. Um. So we're going to be having to go... It's going backwards and forwards a few times to go and get... To reload the thing. And that obviously is more cost because it's draining more seed out of our seed drills. Seed drill, seed driller. There and... Oops. A little bit fast there. Moving it round from this angle is not easy. There. That one like that. And then move it over this way. Lift you up a little bit like that. Take that one off. And I've got one more tree that I want to cut down. And then we are done. And that is going to be the end of our episode. I will just run over and double check how our tractor is doing. I'm sure it's doing a grand job over there. Let's take you off like that. Bring you back. See, now I've got another one that sat by itself over there. And this is the thing, whenever, I've said this before, whenever you're cutting in a circle around a load of trees, you always end up with a tree that looks like it's sat out by itself. You go and take that one out, and then you'll have another one somewhere that looks like it's sat by itself, um, causing problems, and so on and so forth. Right, let's get that one. See, that one's a little bit longer. So I think that one would probably be all right. I'm going to cut the end off and get rid of it anyway. But it would probably have loaded up onto the trailer. I'm going to bring you out down over here. And I'll extend it out over that way. See, it's this lone tree right here. At least I can easily grab it. There. Take that one and then swing it over there a bit. Down you go, and we'll just chop this one up, and then that is going to be it. We're not going to do any more trees. That is all we've got time for. So we're going to have to stop. We've got no choice in the matter. Cut you off there, and then I've got the little itty-bitty bit right there. Oops. I'll go like this, and... Chop the top of that one off like that. And then I'm just going to bring this one down here so he's slightly out of the way of the other stuff. There. And I'll stop it right there. So that's done. We've, we've done all the trees that we want to do for a minute. This one is actually doing a really good job. We have progressed really nicely with this. We're on minus $47. So what we will do is we in our next episode, we will load up the timber that we have gotten over there. And then sell it which will allow us to be able to start doing our planting we will get and start down over in that corner with the seed drill and we will start planting straight away we're not going to do anything around the outside edges of the field with the seed drill we will do that at the end and tidy it all up all we will do is start working on the land work but that's all we've got time for today so if you've enjoyed this episode then please hit down below and give us a like and if you really enjoyed it then please tell your friends all about me get them to come and watch as well that would be awesome and until next time 
Thank you very much for watching. This is Frithgar. Goodbye, and see you later.